Hello. How y'all doing? Good, cool. Uh, so I'm Josh Troyhoff, uh, the founder and creative director of Salvage Supper Club. And um, before I get into my story, I just have a couple of quick questions for you guys. So the first one is, can I just get a show of hands? How many of you in this room would eat the stalk of a broccoli? Okay, so most of you. How about if you were at the store and you saw this weird, twisted, knobby carrot? Okay, similar. Uh, what about smashed apples like that at your store or in your house? Okay, zero, wow. Oh, maybe one, all right. And what about a crazy looking potato that had been sitting in your uh, cabinet too long? Okay, so a couple. So I asked these questions, um, a point actually that Tomas very clearly made, uh, to get us to think a bit more about the decisions that we make as individuals or as food manufacturers about how we procure and uh, our supply chains in light of the fact that we waste a ton of edible food in this country. Um, Tomas had some amazing stats in his. There are a range of them out there, whether it's $22 billion a year or 60 million tons or 40% of our food supply or 400 pounds per person per year, which is the equivalent of more than a pound per person per day. So that's like throwing your dinner in the trash can every evening, every day of the year. Um, we're wasting a ton of food. And I think that that's really staggering, particularly in light of the fact that we have 78 million people in our country that are food insecure. So we have a lot of people who are having trouble putting a square meal on their table every day. And we have a ton of edible food that we're currently putting into landfills rather than into people's stomachs. Um, and so in addition to obviously an economic problem and a food justice problem, uh, we also have an environmental problem, which is that we're investing all these resources in growing and transporting all this food, and that actually when it ends up in a landfill, it produces methane, which is a greenhouse gas 21 times more potent than CO2. So we're talking about CO2 emissions and think about the climate accords and all these things, and actually we're putting food into landfills that's like uh, having a terrible consequences. Um, and there are a lot of people working on this issue. Obviously there are people on this panel, there are probably people out on the show floor and in the room who are actually trying to make a difference on this here in New York City. Um, we're taking f organics and compost and food scraps and we're turning them into energy. Here you see a wastewater treatment plant that's actually feeding energy back to our grid to power our homes and our businesses that's using food waste that people are currently tossing or more prominently, um, composting. A lot of people are focusing on composting in cities around the world in America. Um, here we have, uh, people have been composting for quite some time in a pretty small way in New York. We now have pilot programs collecting from a few neighborhoods, um, actually at the residential scale, and in the next couple of years, the city will be rolling out residential collections. So you'll be getting your recycling collected and your trash collected and your food scraps collected. Um, and I should say, personally, I'm like a total geek for composting. I'm like, I'll have like a banana peel or an orange peel in my pocket for half a day, trying to find a place to drop it off because I don't want to put it in a trash can, which is weird, not saying you all should do that. Um, but I am somebody who cares very deeply about that. The issue is that when you actually look at the hierarchy of what we should be doing with our food, composting and turning it into energy are actually pretty low. They're better than landfilling but they're not how we should be thinking about what we should be doing with all this food that we're growing. Um, we should be reducing the amount of waste to begin with, and then we should be feeding the extra stuff to people when we can. Um, and so I actually took a very similar approach for my food journey, which was um, I was focused on the waste. How do we reduce the waste? So I started a startup composting company here in New York, uh, collecting food scraps from small and mid-sized restaurants and cafes. Uh, we went out of business. That's a story for a different time. Um, I also, I'm a designer. I started a, a project um, focused on basically like making sculptures out of my own food waste and had some gallery shows and Instagram campaigns, et cetera, to try to get people to engage in something that they typically think of as ugly, but to see it in a different light, hopefully to get people to think about waste in a new way. Um, and I had a big turning point uh, a couple of years ago, maybe four years ago. My girlfriend at the time, I, I came home from school, I was in graduate school, and she had been juicing. And there was this like cup of um, uh, like carrot and ginger smash from the end of the juice process. And I was like, I wonder if you could eat that. Has anybody ever tried to eat anything? like It was disgusting. It was like a bitter, the texture was gr gross. Um, 
And so I snapped a photo of it, I put it on Instagram, and I said, I tried eating this, it was bad. Anybody got any good ideas for what you could use this for? And all of a sudden, I got a bunch of responses. People said, hey, you could totally use that as a slaw. You could use that as the base in a sauce. You could use that in a soup. You could make crackers if you dehydrate it. You could put it into a veggie burger. And I was like, people were really excited and interested in this idea of using something that would be waste as food, rather than thinking about it as waste. And that was the moment where I realized focusing on waste to try to solve the waste problem is very difficult because waste is seen as icky. We don't want to think about it. It makes us feel guilty if we think too hard about the fact that we're throwing stuff away. We think it's going to be hard to change our behaviors. But food is something that all of us have to deal with every day and most of us like dealing with. We pay to go out to eat with our friends and family. We take pictures of our food and put it on Facebook and Instagram and share it. And so how do we focus on food rather than focusing on waste in order to get people to start thinking about changing their attitudes and behaviors. And that led me to this idea, which is a terrible name, but I call it the spectrum of desirability, which is just to say that food exists on this spectrum from like the perfect stuff at one end to the stuff that we would say is not edible at the other end. And most of us, perhaps present company not included, focus at a very narrow slice at the perfect end but in reality, almost all of it is edible, and a lot of it can be used to make great food. So what could we do? Like, Imagine the impact that we could all have if we just expanded how much of that spectrum we were willing to, use, to eat or willing to put into the foods that we manufacture or that we were willing to sell. Um, and so with that, I ask you all to, I guess, eat everything is what I call this. Um, our goal in the work that I do is about inspiring and empowering anyone who cooks or eats or touches the food system in some way, whether a manufacturer, a restaurant, a chef, to make the most of the edible food in their lives. Um, and so a few years ago, I started working on this to see, will people embrace that idea, like actually changing the way that we think and act when it comes to food waste? I started with a supper club. Seemed like an easy way, not too costly. People already go to supper clubs. They're social, the food's good. And so we launched this thing called Salvage Supper Club. Uh, this was one of our first ones. It was dining al fresco on the Gowanus Canal over in Brooklyn. Uh, the idea was a six course um, communal table tasting menu where every course is made out of food that would have gone to waste. So that's like the pictures we saw at the beginning. That's broccoli stalks and carrot greens and bruised apples and all of these things. Um, and so we created a menu, worked with a chef, um, and instead of doing it in your home or in a closed restaurant or a pop-up space, uh, we did it inside of a retrofit demolition dumpster. Um, and part of that was because I wanted to have something cool and interesting that people would want to come to and pay to eat at. Uh, but part of it was also that I thought it was an interesting metaphor, which is that a lot of the food that we throw away, we look at the outside and it looks not right, and so we toss it, but the inside was fine. And this dumpster was, uh, well, it was a dumpster on the outside, but um, inside it was this kind of like warm communal table uh, place where people were coming together over food and enjoying each other's company. Um, so here you see uh, Celia Lamb, she was our chef at the time, she's now our culinary director, uh, explaining what people were about to get into, talking about the courses that they were going to come to. And I thought it was a really interesting um, experience that people were actually like there and engaged and talking to each other and like seeing food in a different way and that they were sitting inside of a dumpster which said to me uh, people actually can change their attitudes their minds about these things if you pull the right levers through design and communication and so it was things like yeah this these carrots and day-old bread uh, turning into carrot hummus and crostinis or um, uh, those damaged apples and some of those crazy potatoes um, going into roasted parsnip potato and apple soup. Uh, or those broccoli stalks uh, getting turned into julienne broccoli stalk salad with an uh, aged ginger dressing. Or bananas, I'm sure we've all seen these in our own homes. Uh, and some cookies left over from a catering event turned into an aged banana custard with a captured cookie crust. And people ate every morsel of every course across the whole dinner. Um, and they started taking pictures and hashtagging them and sharing them on social media with their friends, uh, helping sort of like spread that word beyond just the dinner. And they started asking at the dinner and in follow-ups and emails if they could get recipes for how to cook these things in their own and change some of their own food behaviors. 
we started getting emails from people unsolicited saying, I was out grocery shopping and like I, I wasn't being so judgmental exactly what Tomas was saying. I, I realized like the apples are all the same. I might as well grab whichever one. Or that they're worry, willing to start cooking with things that are past their sell-by date rather than just uh, tossing it in the trash. And so we decided to have another one. We did a couple of dinners in Williamsburg. Um, and again, Celia and her team uh, made delicious food out of stuff that would have otherwise gone to waste. And people started stopping by and saying, like, this is so cool. What the hell's going on here? How do I get on this list? People in the, uh, generating this really interesting conversation. And again, we started getting feedback from people about the food was great, the experience was good. I've started thinking differently about how I shop and cook in my own home. So we did more dinners, and we did dinners in Prospect Heights. And we did a gallery dinner in Tribeca with 50 people almost, uh, and collaborating with an artist who makes all of his work out of waste. We did a 350-person holiday party in the financial district. Um, the dinners in San Francisco, in Berkeley, California. So what started as a small idea, pop, little pop-ups here in New York, three small events, eventually grew to something that's regularly happening a few times a year in a bunch of different neighborhoods here in New York. Um, now has happened in cities across the US. We've done four events in Japan. We've done events in Los Angeles, in New Orleans. We've got some happening in Canada soon, one happening in Portland next month. Um, and it's small. You know, when we think about the stuff, those numbers at the beginning of my presentation or in Tomas's, we've touched a little more than 800 guests and 1,700 pounds of food, which is like a drop in the bucket compared to the billions of pounds that we're throwing away every year. Um, but I think that it's, it's part of a bigger message. It's part of a bigger conversation that's happening. And I think that that's the piece is like, is that we're all working on something together, slowly growing over time, changing attitudes, changing mindsets, getting people to think about how we could be actually using our food in a different way than we are today. And not just focusing on waste, but actually focusing on the food, about thinking about what that really means. And I, I feel you know, fortunate that um, we've actually had a great reception, that the, the media and the world is also starting to think about these things in a real way, both at a national level and at a local level here in New York and in the US. Um, and that there's tons of people that are working together on this issue, whether it's Michelin-starred chefs like Dan Barber, Dan Barber and Massimo Batura, or um, Tristram Stewart launching beer brands made out of wasted bread, that there's, there's really activity happening and that the market is actually like starting to respond and the message is getting out, which I think is great. So, you know, when I think about this, the future for Savage Supper Club and where we want to be, where we want to go, um, obviously it would be great if there were more chefs and restaurants and food companies and all these things, people wanting to get involved in hosting their own Salvage Supper Club or collaborating with us on projects or people wanting to do it with their neighbors in their apartment building on a Sunday using their leftovers. But it's not just about us, you know? It's like when I think of the Specialty Food Association and this event, it's, it's not just Salvage Supper Clubs. It's anybody who touches the food system in some way, whether you make a food product or you're a grocery store or a food co-op or any of those things. We could all be taking actions to change how we think about what is edible and to help get that stuff out into the world. And so with that, um, I hope that you all join me in eating everything. If you looked at those images at the beginning and said, hey, I wouldn't eat those things, maybe you'll at least start thinking a little bit differently about the food in your own life. Uh, if you want to collaborate on those things or find opportunities together, I would love to work on them with any one of you. So thanks so much.